Hello everybody, what's up? Today I'm going to show you a procedural cork shader. The shader looks fairly complex. There are a lot of nodes, but all of these nodes are very simple ones. For this reason, I created a group node with only the settings that I'm going to use more often. Let's see what kind of material you can get with this uh, shader. I'd say that the settings here on the right are very good for a cork wood material like the one on the board here on the background, but for other objects they can be tweaked a little bit. For instance, the shader in these bottle corks is not quite right, so I'm going to change it a little bit. First thing, I'm gonna create a duplicate of the material, then I will assign it to all the bottle corks in the scene. The first settings I'm going to change is the variation. I want less dark spots, so I will remove it altogether. I will also decrease the scale, so make the grain smaller. And now it looks like as a finer grain. We can change to a more yellow color and we can also change the saturation directly from the settings of the shader. I'm quite happy with the result, uh, it looks much better than before. From a distance maybe the difference is not very noticeable, but once you have a close-up of the object, you will need something that looks much better, so you don't want the default settings. The next settings are going to be changed for these uh, plates, and we're gonna change this very cork material to something more wood. So I'm going to duplicate the material once again and we're gonna call it wood. We can start adding some grains to it and then it will look like very rough. I will then add some uh, coating like a gloss layer on top. Also I will change the scale so you can have a completely different looking material. Um, it's very easy to fiddle with the settings until you find something completely different and now I have a pattern that is completely different and removing the variation will give a very different look. It's a very versatile shader and you can get from cork wood to plain wood to ceramic to marble and I'm going to show you something completely different for the leads here. Just changing the variation and adding some uh, gloss to it with the shininess and the scale, I have now a completely different material. So it's no more even a wood material, it looks more like a ceramic with a coating. Um, last touch probably needs a slightly different color to look a bit more artificial instead of having this uh, natural look. Before going to change the settings of the cutting board, I'm going to duplicate the material once more and I'm doing this each single time so that I can have multiple instances of my material and I'm not going to change the material of all the objects with that shader. So we're gonna change the saturation, almost removed, and the color, something a bit cooler, and the scale, and then remove some of the variation. And I also want to add some uh, shine back and probably some grains and as you can see now I have these lighter areas that are smooth and shiny while the dark areas are like carvings so they have no reflections and they are rough. Here you can see on the right side especially where there's the reflection. Before showing you how this shader is made, what's inside the group node, I want to tell you that you can buy and download this uh, material the file you download will include the shader with the full settings and all the geometry here in the scene, so it will be this project. And the first 20 of you that will like the video and leave a comment below will get a discount of 100%. The shader will be free. If you want to instead create the shader by yourself, I'm going to show you now what's inside the group node so that you can replicate by yourself. All the settings that I show you are in this uh, group node, which I call control node, because it will control some of the settings of the shader network, but all grouped together. 
and inside the group node the shader network looks like this. It's a bit messy. At the core we have a principal node. I haven't changed any of the settings of the node. I used a lot of different noise nodes and I use them both for uh, defining uh, the color, for the roughness and also for the normals as bump map. I will ignore how to do groups in this uh, video because you may already know how to do it and it's a very long subject. We start with a mapping node connected to a texture coordinate node and we're using the object input. The global scale it's defined directly from uh, the settings in the group here you can see scale and using this combine and separate I have one value from the group input that control the three value of the scale. I'm using three groups of noise texture. The first one, the simple noise texture, you can see the parameter here, it goes directly into a color ramp. The settings here are to change the contrast and to assign black and white as the noise texture is usually multicolor. The color ramp will then go into a mix RGB with the multiply settings in one of the two inputs. The other input instead it's linked to another uh, group of noise, so it's another mix RGB, but the input is coming from this Musgrave texture and this magic texture, and those two are basically mixed, multiplied let's say, with our third group of noise texture. The output of these two, it goes into a bright contrast node and then they will finally mix with a second group of textures. And this will go into the first mix RGB node. So to recap, group 3 and group 2 are mixed together with the group 1 which is our first noise texture. The final output will go directly into the input of a color ramp that defines the color of my base cork material while the pattern of the cork material is defined by all the noise groups combined together. The reason I used multiple noise uh, groups textures is because I want a lot of variation, I want details at different um, scale I want cracks, I want uh, darker spots, and I want to be able to change the ratio so that I can control them individually. I've also multiplied the color ramp color by itself, and the reason I'm doing this is because I can control this through the group node, and basically I will achieve some kind of change in the strength of the color. For example, let me show what's happened when I unlink and I'll change this value manually. You can see clearly how stronger the color will become, just multiplying it by itself. And it's what I called contrast. It's not really the contrast of color, but it's the strength of the color. So again, I call the contrast input in the group node, which I'm gonna bring it closer so you can see exactly how it is connected. It's connected to a channel that I'll call contrast so that in the group node you have something that you can change on the fly. And to get even more control, the output of the multiply is going into a color it's still a mix RGB, but this, this time it's a color settings and it's a mix between the color that we have from the ramp and a U that we define from outside the group. So again, I connected the group to an input, which then from outside can be defined and the mix of this uh, you that it's very subtle it will maintain the general colors but it will change slightly the U, not too much so it will stay natural in a similar way i added also a control of the saturation with the saturation node 
and the saturation value is defined by the group itself. So from outside this shader network, I can control the saturation of the final color. All of this part of the network goes straight into the base diffuse color of the shader. I understand this may feel a bit messy, overwhelming, but for this reason there is a link where you can download and study by yourself how this is made. The group 3 and group 2 that mix and they go into the part of the network to define the color are also used, so I use the same output to go into a color ramp down here to this color ramp that I will use to define other settings of the shader. So it's just simple color ramp to cut some of the um, range of the noise and it's mixed with the color ramp coming directly from the group number one. So again, I'll mix the three groups, first the second and third, and then the first one. They all have this uh, cut of the range with this color ramp. They are mixed. And then I will output to a bump node here below. And the same mix is going also to be used with the color ramp to just smooth the quantity of color inside the bright and contrast node and inside the roughness. But I also wanted to control how much of roughness it's in the material. So I linked the contrast into my usual group node that is used to um, control all the settings of the shader. So I call it shininess. It's the roughness really, but I want to give a different name and it's connected to the roughness. Some other settings defined in the group node are, for example, the variation. And the variation, um, it's basically what controls how much of group two and three it's displayed. So the two group of noises. And this is done basically uh, connecting the FAC input. Then we have the grain settings, which will change how much of group 2 and 3 are mixed with group 1. And then we have also um, coverage, which will change how much of um, the scale, actually, of group 2 is big. So depending on that scale, we will remove that top layer of the shader. If we go into the group, again, we can play a little bit with the settings. So you can see what's happened. This is the contrast and this is the saturation. And then we have um, the shininess, which is the roughness connected to the roughness node. We have the general scale. And then we have the variation and grains and coverage. Of course, you can play with them and achieve completely different uh, patterns. And yes, they are similar, but while variation is this random shape, grains are more like uh, big marks and coverage instead is the depth of this uh, carving of the material. And while variation and grains are about the color itself, coverage it's about the depth, so the surface, the layer. And mixing all these settings you can get very very different result and this one looks like chocolate. I must be very hungry now. I hope you like this video and if you download the material or create something with this shader, let me know, uh, leave a comment, please subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time. Ciao.